This is Melvin Black, and today I'm going to talk about building dashboards using SQL reporting services. SQL reporting services is Microsoft's most mature reporting solution, and you can do a lot of great things using this tool. I'm going to begin inside the Business Intelligence Center. And generally, you don't have to start here. You can start using Visual Studio or SQL Report Builder. Uh, but I want to demonstrate some of the locations where you save certain content. Um, for starters, you want to have a data source. So to do that, you would generally save that in Data Connections location. Now, I've already created a data source inside the Performance Point data source location. And if you look at the properties of that data source, it's very familiar with the typical Microsoft data source model. Now, I'm going to initiate the environment that I use to create the reports. In this example, I'm going to use Report Builder simply because it's just easier to use uh, than Visual Studio for reports. So I'll select the reports folder and that's under documents, library tools, I'll select new documents and I'll select report builder. This will launch report builder. Um, if I've done this for the first time it would actually install report builder. Okay, now that I have the secret reporting Builder tool installed and running, I'm going to uh, first create a data source. All right, and I'm going to point to that data source that I originally showed you under the performance point content. I'll just call this Tom Diamond BS, show for data source, and I'll browse because I'm going to pull one that I've already created again under data connection for performance point. I'll select that tabular data source. All righty, I can test, make sure everything's fine, and I select OK. Now I need to create a query that I'm going to use to um, create objects on the report. So like many other Microsoft reporting tools, I'm going to create a data set. And I'll just call this and I'm going to use one that's embedded in my report that I just created, that data source, and I'm going to select Query Designer. Alrighty, for those that have used uh, Pivot Tables, this is a relatively familiar environment. I want to select about four measures, so let's say quantity, sales, um, orders, and let's just say percentage of sales. And I'm also going to add two dimensions. I'm going to add the date label dimension, just for the day of the week. And I'm going to add, um, under the menu options, I'll just specify the diner menu hierarchy. All righty, so um, that gives me my basic set of data. And one of the great things about using SQL reporting services with a tabular or ORAP queue, I get to create uh, parameters or filters relatively easy. So I'm going to select the dining type and the dining type hierarchy equals to, and I'm going to specify the options to select. And I'm going to select this last option there, that's parameters. This creates a filter inside my uh, reporting environment. So I'm going to select OK to accept those changes. And you can see that it creates some MDX for me. That saves me a lot of time. And I'll select OK. And you can see the measures and the dimension uh, values here. So I'm going to size this a little here. And I'm going to, by default, SQL reporting service gives you sort of a template. You know, I'm going to remove the default text boxes and the page border. So give me a clean canvas here. All right, so I want to add a, ta a table. 
I can do that two ways. I can right click this canvas and select insert table, or I can go to the menu option here and select table as well, or insert table. I can use the table wizard or I can use manually create the table. I'm going to specify uh, table wizard just so it can be a little faster here. And I'm going to first start with um, category as a row option. And I'm going to select, actually, I'll just do, let's try menu option, column. Um, and I really only care about the measures in the category, so I'm just going to leave that here. Uh, so I, actually, those are values, so I need to put these in my values location. Okay, so I have this column and these metrics. I'm going to select next. And it gives me sort of a default look here. That's fine. I'll select next. Um, it's going to give me an option to choose, you know, some styles. I can just say generic to keep it simple. And I'll select finish, and it gives me this pat pat. So I can s move it around, size it a little bit if I like it to be a little bit more. Um, remove much white space. I can add another column by right clicking any of these columns, but I want an additional one at the end, so I'm going to select um, inside and left. Oh, sorry, let's remove that. I want it inside. Let's just do outside right. Okay. And, um, you know, if I run this, it's going to show some results of um, the measures and the dimension I specify. Okay, as you can see, I put it in a format that I don't not necessarily like. So I'm going to make a few changes. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to insert it manually. So actually I picked the wrong one. I'm going to insert the table and I'm going to select category quantity, sales, orders, and a percentage of sales. And I want to add another column here because I want to um, use a little bit of graphics here as well. So in this last row here, sorry, last column, I'm going to right click that error and I'm going to add a data bar. And I'm going to use this bar graph select this bar graph and it brings up another property page here and I want the bar to represent a percentage of the sales and I want the horizontal axis for the max to be one which would be you know 100 percent and um, so percentage of sales you don't have to format it I want this to be the percentage our orders can be a number that are out of sales, there's currency, so let's just say currency. Quantity, again, just a regular number. Okay, and I'm going to enter the showing spaces so I can move those. And now, if I run this, okay, it gives me a, a better view. Now I can see that it's sort of did not give me exactly, I don't want a beverage for each menu option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group this and I'm going to the row groups, group properties, and I wanna group everything by category. And now when I run it, I don't want, there we go, that's a little better. All right. And, okay, so now, just another menu option. Oh, actually a chart. So let me insert a chart. Let's take a bar chart. It's fine. I'm going to size it a bit here. And for this bottom axis, I want that to be date. So I want to look at everything by the day of the week. And I want to look at the sales. 
colors the green cells. can just add another text box at the top, you know, because you always want a title. Always make sure your quotes and dashboards look nice under the title. So I'll call this Tom's Dynamic Sales. And then I can, you know, bold it, center it, you know, fill in that box. You know, you can do a lot of things to make them look a little bit more impressive. Now I'm going to run this a little bit more interesting and I still maintain my options to filter so if I just want to look at dine-in statistics I can select dine-in and I have to rerun it by selecting view report and it's going to change the actual display there so if I do carry out same option it changes now let's say I'm happy with this and you know what I can do is I can save this back to my SharePoint environment I select reports because that's just a good place to put reports. And I'll call this Tom's Dining. And I'll say, all right, now if I go back to uh, my report location, well, it doesn't see it, so I'll refresh. And now there's Tom's Dining. If I select that, it runs the report that I just created. Again, I still maintain my options to filter. If I just want to look at dry group data, I can select that and just sort of filter it that way. And that's sort of an example of using SQL reporting services that's integrated with SharePoint. And that concludes my presentation.